Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. So, going into this, um, I gotta sit there and say this is one of the more better episodes. Um, a couple of things happened. Um, let's just get into it. So, um, Robert and Spinelli, apparently it's gonna be teaming up. So, um, you know, when Robert was on um, breaking and stuff like that and he heard the, you know, the door rattling, you know, it was, um, Spinelli. Now, of course, they, you know, they showed Robert had Spinelli in some sort of stranglehold or something, you know, um, whatever. Um, so, you know, they talked for a little bit and, um, you know, Spinelli's like, listen, instead of us arguing, why don't we just work together? And then, you know, um, you know, Robert's all like, oh, well, I'm the DA. Okay, and you still have to explain to Anna, um, what are you doing here? He's like, oh, well, I'll just have Mac, I'll just have Mac, um, you know, take care of it. Yeah, but you're still gonna actually have to explain to Maxine and Peter why you're here. So, honestly, tell you the truth, you know, Robert was trying to do the whole, you know, I'm the tough guy and stuff like that. But he knew that, you know, they were at a stalemate. I don't know why they dragged that scene on so long. Um, you know, and Robert was like, listen, you know, you're a great tech guy, but you're not really good as far as being on your feet in the field. So, you know, Spinelli was like, listen, you know, you're right. I could sit there and do, you know, the hacking and you could sit there and do the, fur um, the footwork. Um... So, you know, they agreed. And, um, you know, as Robert was leaving, you know, he gets a call. Now, remember that whole thing with, um... Remember that whole thing when Peter was like, and make sure you set up that distraction. So, you know... Um, that distraction was, um, oh, it was another dead body. It was, um, Holly. So, apparently, you know, there's another death off screen. Um, that was, um, you know, gonna be his distraction. So, you know, Robert goes, you know, after he hears news or whatever, he goes to Anna, and Anna's in, the, and Anna's in her hole. da 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 you left, da 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 You know, after a while, it's like, all right, Anna, shut up. Um, and Robert's like, you know, Holly's dead. And she's like, oh, okay. So that's pretty much how their scene, that's pretty much how his scene ends off and pretty much, um, Spinelli's. So let's get into Michael and Carly talking more strategy about the fact that it's better, um, for, um, you know, Michael to marry Willem, you know, um, you know, at first Sasha was there, Sasha was not there saying, you know, just talking strategy, whatever Sasha left. And um, Carly was like, listen, you know, she said the one thing. She didn't say the one thing that you need to do, which is to marry Willow. And, you know, Michael was not there fighting it, blah, 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 blah. And, um, you know, that was pretty much about it. So, um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, I'll to tell you the truth. There wasn't really a lot that happened. Um... As far as Michael and um, Carly is concerned, Carly is just content with just running Michael's life. That's the bottom line. And it's so sad that I didn't see that before. Um, so. Okay. So in the beginning of the um, episode, Lulu and um, Laura talk. And Lulu's like, you know, what was he talking to Valentine about? And, um, you know, long story short, um... You know, at first, um, Lulu was like, oh, well, what do you sit there and try to sneak up on you and say stuff and, you know, initiate this conversation? Was he going to sit there and try to get you to, like, you know, ask me to back off? And, um, Laura's like, no, well, um, the thing is, um, so I saw him on purpose. I got your text and I decided that, um, I didn't want to see him because, you know, he makes you mad. And, um, pretty much what... Laura was meant to say, was like, listen, at the end of the day, Charlotte, you know, Valentine is Charlotte's father. Rather you like him or not, you know, we have to do what's best for Charlotte, not just, you know, because the fact that you don't like him. Um, 
and I lose on herself. I don't know where the hell is this coming from. Maybe this was there before and it's the first time I saw it. You know, lose on her self-righteousness. Oh, well, you know, Valentine's a bad father and he sets a bad example and da 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 and da 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 And I'm like, you know what? To be honest, being self-righteous isn't exactly a good example, but whatever. Um, and you know, Laura's like, listen, you know, he has his faults. He's not perfect, but you know what? At the end of the day, he loves his, he, lo um, she loves his father. And we got to do his best for, you know, Charlotte. And, you know, um, Lou's all like, ah, you know, this, that, and third. You know, making all those ex ugly expressions on her face. Um, and what the fuck else happened? Uh, so let's see. Uh, Nicholas talked to Ava. You know, Nicholas and Ava was having dinner at the Metro Court because apparently they can ex afford that expensive place. Um... So they were talking, and Ava accused Nicholas of putting the snake in her, um, you know, in her purse. Um, and Charlotte was there. Charlotte was like, um, you know, oh, man, you know, you were screaming and, and hollering and everything like that. I mean, Ava, it was so funny how you were just screaming and hollering and stuff like that. Because, you know, Ava tried to play it off. You know, Nicholas was like, oh, was you scared? And Ava was like, oh, well, you know, call me off guard. I was, you know, I jumped a little bit. You know, Charlotte was like, no, you didn't just jump. You were screaming. You were just scared. You know, just really amping it up and stuff like that. Um, and so Nicholas, you know, sits there and talks to um, Charlotte. And Charlotte was all like, oh, you remember that time that, you know, you were my bodyguard? And he was like, uh, so you see this again? And honestly, tell you, after a while, that shit just gets kind of old. It just really gets kind of old, which is going to lead me into my next part. Um, you know, um, Nicholas did try to apologize. She was like, listen, I'm sorry for what I did and what I said and stuff like that. And, you know, Charles all like, oh, well, I can't forgive you, blah, blah, blah. And walks away back to, um, um, the table where Lulu and, um, Lulu and Laura are. And so, um... Lulu walks over to the table, being as self-righteous as ever. This is a this is her thing, which is really sad. Um, so Lulu um walks up and you know she's sitting there talking. Uh, uh, well, Lulu first asks, "How are you doing, Ava, with the whole snake thing and stuff like that?" And um, you know I think she tries to accuse her brother of doing something like that, or she says something along the lines of like you know he's a snake or some shit like that. And, you know, they talk for a little bit. And, um, no. So Lulu's like, what did you, what did you talk to Charlotte about? And, um, like, oh, did, what did you talk to Charlotte about? Like, you know, you shouldn't be talking to my daughter and stuff like that. And then Lulu brings up the whole, you remember that time where you told my daughter that you was her secret bodyguard and she jumped, you know, jumped into the water thinking that you were going to save her? And Nicholas was like, so we're doing this again? We're, we're really going to talk about this again? And in my mind, I'm thinking the exact same thing. And, um, you know, Lulu's like, oh, well, yeah, we're going to do it because you're being a bad person and blah, 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 blah. And Ava's like, yo, listen, you need to get off your high horse. Like, don't take yourself as right, you know, your, your self-righteous ass over here, you know, yelling at my husband like that, blah, 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 blah. Trying to defend him or whatever because um, earlier, Valentine walked up and Valentine, um, Valentine was like, "What are you doing talking to my daughter? Um, don't talk to my daughter like that, you know. Um, don't talk to my daughter." And she said that more to Ava and Nicholas. Try to you know be all like, "Oh, don't talk to my wife like that," and you threw her off the cliff or something like that. And <laughs> Valentine was like, "Listen, you can cut the chivalry, Bing." Because I know what goes on in that house. I know that y'all stay in separate beds. And y'all are miserable together. And I am so happy about that. Um, that's pretty much was um, Valentine's reaction. So that's when, um, you know, Ava decided to stick out for um, Nicholas. Because, you know, Lulu was on her self-righteousness. Because they were talking about throwing a party and stuff like that. And having people over. And Franco... And, um, Elizabeth, and then, you know, 
Lulu walks away with the whole, oh, well, Elizabeth was a really good influence on you. Too bad she's taken. I'm like, okay, just go. Go back to whatever. Just get the hell out of here. You know, I just, I also tell you, she felt just done with her self-righteousness. And, um, you know, so Ava and Nicholas talk for a little bit. And, um, you know, Ava has the idea of bringing everyone to the, to the, um, to the Windermere. You know, to throw a party or whatever. To throw a good, you know, a nice dinner party and to unveil her, um, her portrait. And Nicholas just decided to act like a dick. Like, just a straight up dick. And he started laughing like, oh, no one wants to sit there and go to your stupid party with your stupid portrait. No one cares about you, pretty much. And starts laughing. I'm like, bro, how many drinks did you have? Because, I, I mean, you see him drinking and stuff like that. And I'm like, I'm just curious, like, did you... Should she start counting your drinks? Because she seemed like she just can't take you anywhere. You're just an asshole. Um, and that's when, you know, Ava walked off like, yo, don't be a dick. I'm taking the launch and you can just doggy paddle um, back to win the man. She just walked off and to be honest, I was, I was on her side. Uh, so, a couple of things that um, happened, sort of. So Jason and Sonny talk business more or less, and it's gonna be in the previews um, about Cyrus Renault and how Cyrus is, you know, gonna be doing the long game, you know, um, having um, Jordan, you know, push more hard on Sonny and direct traffic less um, to, um, you know, towards his operations. And Sonny was like, listen, he can't push too hard because if people find out what Jordan's doing, Jordan's going to get fired and he's not going to actually have the leverage he needs. Um, but pretty much what it comes down to is um, Cyrus is going to be able to make his shipments and he's going to be able to stop Sonny from making his. And that's, <clears throat> you know, pretty much just going to be the long game. It's just to hurt Sonny over time. So, you know, um, they talk strategy and they're like, yo, listen, we should go to this meeting. And I think Jason was like, listen, we should talk about negotiations. And Sonny was like, all right, we can negotiate up to a point. So I'm just like, all right, bro. So now you're just going to let your pro... Because, you know, at first he was like, you know, war is bad for business and stuff like that. But if I have to, I'll take him down just like any other body else to try to get up in my way. So I'm just like, is this going to be an ego trip? Like, is Sonny just going to, like, go into this meeting in the next episode... And be like, well, I'm Sonny, and I'm big bad, and you can't do shit, and this is my turf, and blah, blah, blah. So, we're gonna see. Um, and right when they're talking strategy, and they finish up talking strategy, um, Carly comes in, and Jason's like, alright, I'm about to leave. And um, I think that's when um, Sonny's gonna probably start to go to the meeting a little bit. But then he gets a call from Turning Woods, and um, it's Mike. And they're sniffing there saying that, you know, he had another fall, and this time it was a seizure. So... Not looking good for Mike. Um, and I'll just leave it at that. Other than that, oh, um, Valentine knew who, you know, like, you know, who ordered the snake and who put the snake and, um, you know, Ava's purse and Charlotte confessed. Charlotte was like, listen, I did this because they're bad people and they took over everything and they're, you know, they're your enemies and this is the reason why we're not a family. So that's why Charlotte um, did that. And I was kind of wondering, because I was like, what the fuck? Honestly, tell you the truth, here's the thing, and I still don't understand. Please, in the comment section, right down below, especially if you watched it. The snake was in the piñata. The idea was when somebody pulls the string, because we don't hit piñatas anymore. Um, when somebody pulls the string, you know, the candy falls down and so does the snake. That didn't happen. So did the snake just teleport? Like, what What was the point of that? Why was Charlotte so worried? Why was Charlotte so worried about who was going to be um, getting the snake on them? If the snake was never in the piñata in the first place. Okay, this is why I felt like the writers changed the way the story was. And tried to edit it the best way they could. And they just fucked up. They just fucked up. There was just no way around it. They just fucked up. Um, but yeah, you know, so that's why she did it. So at least we know why. Um, 
Charlotte's not exactly that spiteful. Not that spiteful. Mind you, she was bullying Eighth, um, um, Aiden. I was gonna say Jeffrey or Je whatever. Um, so, um, uh, I think the last thing that I'm gonna, I'm gonna, one second. Oh, um, so Maxi, Maxi, Anna, and Peter are talking, and, um, you know, they're like, oh, well, Robert left because, you know, he couldn't stand me that much longer, and, um, Maxie's like, well, I put Robert in this place, and, um, Peter was like, well, I put Spinelli in this place, and, you know, they have that flashback conversation, which actually was a good one, um, it was when Peter was trying to negotiate peace at, um, Spinelli, and Peter was like, listen, we're gonna have to sit there and try to get along, and, um, you know, Spinelli was like, yo, I'm good, we're trying to get along, and Peter was like, listen, at the end of the day, if we can't get along, Max is going to have to choose between one of us. And um, Spinelli was like, well, I'm comfortable with that. And Peter was like, are you sure? <laughs> I was like, hi, right, Peter, you got that round. That was good. You got that right. He was like, are you sure you're comfortable with that? You know, um, because he was like, you know, at the end of the day, I'm going to be in everyone's life and I'm going to be a permanent fixture. And Max was like, because... Maxie is going to marry me. Um, so that was a good flashback. But, um, you know, that's when he, that's when Peter said, like, I told, um, I told Spinelli that we're going to get married. And, you know, Maxie was like, what the hell are you doing? You discussed that and now you got your mother, you just put me on the spot. Like, that's how Maxie was looking. Maxie was like, are you fucking serious? Um... Priceless, by the way. But, um, after, you know, Peter helped with the kids, Anna was being overprotective to some extent, but she was also like, listen, just be careful with my son's heart because marriage, family, and love is very serious to him. And so, if you're not gonna, you know, she went in his roundabout way, but she was pretty much like, listen, if you're not gonna be serious with Matt, if you're not gonna be serious with Peter, you need to tell him. Because don't sit down and play around with his heart. You know, he's done a lot to be a better person. Blah, blah, blah. And um, Max was just like, listen, we got this. You don't need to be overprotective. Um, Peter can pretty much be his own man. Stop being a second Carly. Um, because that's pretty much where that's going. Um, glad I brought that up. I'm glad I actually did notes. Thank you to the person who actually recommended me to do notes again. Because, yeah. Um... One sec. Yep, okay. Uh, so, lastly, because I'm just going to sit there and say, what the... So, you know, they meet at the park. Chase and Sasha meet at the park because they're like, yo, listen, um, Willow... No one, here's the thing, Willow, you know, won't accept, you know, if, you know, um, Janelle or Nell gets, um, custody or share custody. Um, Willow won't be able to live with herself. That's what Chase is saying. And, um, Sasha was like, Michael won't be able to live with herself either. So, I think they discussed some sort of plan because they was like, listen, are you sure you're okay with this? And, um, Sasha was like, no, but it's the only way. So, uh, <sighs> Sasha and Chase hook up, um, when, um, when Willow just walks in the door. Willow walks in the door and she's like, listen, I guess they're going to be okay. Because here's the thing, um, Willow and Michael met right before and Michael was like, listen, we need to go over the strategy thing. Um, for the custody, for the custody battle, and, um, Willow was like, well, you know, we got this important, you know, we got this special night, we're about to get this champagne going, and, um, Michael was like, nah, that's cool, you know, I, I'll, I'll take care of it myself, me and my son, you know, just make sure you say bye to my son, because it's his last night at the hospital, you know, the sad thing is that Michael was not sent there trying to guilt trip Willow, but all those things that he said, Guilt tricked the shit out of it. 
give Trish the shit out of Willow. So, you know, Willow was like, listen, you know, we could just do it tomorrow and we could just have the sh um, champagne for everyone since, you know, um, Wiley's going to be coming home. I'm not exactly a fan of that name, but Jonah, I'll take Wiley over Jonah, um, as far as names. So, um, yeah, so Willow walks in the door and she's like, oh, well, I hope Jason can be okay with, you know, pushing back our plans until tomorrow. And she's just like, what the fuck? You know, she sees, um, she sees Sasha on top of, um, you know, Sasha on top of Chase. I, I just, I can't even believe I'm fucking saying that. Um, but you know, the sad thing is I felt like that was going to happen. I felt like that was either going to happen before or it was going to happen after. It was going to be one of those things where, let's just sit there and say that didn't happen. If they would have went through the plan of getting married and stuff like that and showing appearances and things, one of them would have got jealous they would have said something to Michael or Sasha to hurt one or the other. And then they would have ran up to, you know, to each other and hooked up. And then Sasha and um, Chase would have hooked up afterwards. So, this is just a faster way. So, um, I know this kind of, well, lasted a lot longer than I thought it was going to last. But there was a lot more stuff that actually did happen. And um, it was a better episode than it's been. Um, that has been in the last couple of days. So, um, I'll give the writers, I'll give the showrunners and the writers credit for that. So, kudos. Anyway, um, thank you for watching. I know this is, like, kind of late. Um, and I know I did tell people to, do, you know, go to, um, Brock TV. Because she was going to be doing earlier. So, anyone who watched, thank you. And just leave the comments in below, like I said before. And let me know your thoughts, um, your opinions, like always. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, and again, um, shout out to Brock TV because he, you know, gave me some views. So, that's what's up. Have a good day or good night, depending on when you're watching this video. Be safe. Wash your goddamn hands, as always. And I will catch you in the next recap.